Hello guys. Hello guys. Hello guys. Hello guys. Welcome to Shrine's Head Podcast. I am Deborah J. Maya, popularly known as Debbie Mike. The, the vision for healthcare is health promotion. If I remember growing up, okay. uh, you hear parents say this kind of thing that uh, um Ejeko Jokuta letting me the sand. Ah please. <laughs> self medication. Run, 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 run. Because the money you're trying to save with self medication. Because when complications arise, the money you were trying to save so you spend, spend it spend times three. That's true. Okay. A patient should know is your right. When you see that things are not done properly for you, you have a right to sue the healthcare worker. How do we even know they are not properly done? Exactly. That is why we're having podcasts like this. Exactly. This is your best bet on health related tips. Hello guys, welcome to Shrinside Podcast, your best bet on health related tips and health issues generally. This is your number one when it comes to health. Don't miss it. So today I'm excited. You know why? I have someone amazing. I call her Lolo. She's an amazing person. She's a doctor. And um, guys, I know your your ears are itching. You're like, who is this again on the show? Yes, you know how I love to, you know, make so much noise about my guests because I'm super excited for these people. You know, having various personalities come to your show, it's not really easy. And today, guys. Are you ready? I'm unveiling Dr. Miriam. Good to have you in the studio. Thank you very much. Thank Thank you you. for joining us. How are you feeling this morning? Feeling very elated. Okay, and how do you feel being on the podcast today? Feeling very relaxed, my dear. So happy to talk about my journey. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. So today we'll be looking at maternal hygiene and how we can help uh, mothers, pregnant women, and also nursing mothers because these are things that are issues that are bone of contention in our world today especially in nigeria and with the rate of maternal and child mortality rate it is something we really need to pay attention to and i'm glad because you're a mom even though i'm still i'm still behind you i'm coming i think i'll come and learn get some coaching classes but then let's start with as a mom how has it been for you I'll say it's been a roller coaster. Okay. Like, you know, when you're a young girl before you get married, yes, your seed is exactly. Yeah. There's this thing that you feel like when I'm married, I'm not going to lose my steez. Mm-hmm. I'll be able to, you know, keep up with the trend of looking clean, Good, yeah. beautiful, and the rest of them till something hits you hard. <laughs> Pregnancy. Yeah. Oh my god. You throw your shoes away, fling your wig to, to one corner, and then you're feeling like, am I a mad woman in my house? Well, why is it like that when, when, when one gets pregnant? <laughs> Have you ever carried a stone on your belly? Just tie a stone around with a cloth mm. and move from one corner to the other. Or have you had your um, back sack filled with things in it and then you're walking from one place to, to the another. other and you're not putting it down? That is exactly how it feels when you're pregnant. You're mm. carrying something excessive. Wow. I can't relate anyway, <laughs> but hearing that from someone who is experienced, that's, that's um, pretty um, cool. So um, to start with, when we talk about maternal hygiene what what exactly are we talking about your next part and that's what what does it mean I always like to use the very very easy language okay cleanliness mm. cleanliness in every aspect is hygiene yeah if you're not able to keep yourself very clean then it's called poor hygiene yeah and cleanliness stems from your body down to your environment oh but then sorry um you know we talk about personal hygiene and i'm wondering why is it that we have to have another aspect where we call maternal hygiene when personal hygiene is still also talking to oneself yes okay like i once mentioned yeah. when i was single i felt it was easy to continue mm. with the things that i used to do as you know yeah just a girl but when I took in eventually. I knew I had to cut down on some certain things. For uh, maternal and child health now, or maternal hygiene, hygiene, when we talk about things like that, there are some certain things that become excessive when you do. Like nails in pregnancy is advised that you have your nails short. It's even better you don't even paint them. Just... (laughs) 
So are you saying this is my wonderful news now? I would get pregnant one day and you marry will, that. At some point you have to do away with it for a while. It's just for a short while. Yeah. And then you know the long hairs sometimes yeah. it's difficult to maintain That's it. True. Because the heat becomes excessive. And then you can imagine yourself being having to sit down so many hours to make your hair regularly. So you prefer to go on something that is easy to maintain because of the smell that comes with really? heat. So you're actually thinking, hmm, is it that I can't look good? But there are many ways to look good even well, when okay. you're pregnant. Okay, thank you for that. But then I think I've seen lots of pregnant women and nursing mothers. I, I don't want to use the word, they look very terrible somehow. Um, in the sense that they pay less attention and they feel, oh, I'm already married. Like, there's this kind of ideology, like, I'm married, I have a husband already, I don't need to look good, he has paid my bride price, so I should just be there, so long as I have my baths every day, I brush my teeth, that's okay. But is it supposed to be so for no, mothers? I would say this personal hygiene we talk about, some people don't even have it inwardly, mm. because if you have that... Um, thought that I have to look good at all times, even when you're pregnant, some part of you is still irritated that you want, you're not looking good, so you want to look good. good. You understand? So for some women who do that, probably they are from places where they are non challenged it's i think it's a mindset thing because when i was pregnant i must say before i got to a point where it became really heavy for me to carry i was quite conscious of the way i looked because i already had a picture of what i always wanted okay. to look like i had so many pictures i had gathered i wish i brought them here oh wow i had pictures i had gathered of celebrities looking very beautiful when, when they, were they were pregnant, pregnant. Wow. even after delivery there was this picture i used to have on my phone i, I even used it as um wallpaper. my wallpaper <laughs> wow, yes that's interesting. there was a lady wearing her heels carrying her baby and doing her shopping and she was looking good like a woman who hadn't given birth before and then i said oh this could be me even though i'm on the you know, big sight, yeah. bold and beautiful. Bold, big, big bold and, and beautiful, beautiful exactly. yeah. I always felt I could still carry myself well. And then I, I you know, I, I already had a mental picture, not because of my husband now, but because of me. Mm -hmm. I didn't love to look good. good. Though I wasn't able to carry long hairs and all, but I was wearing wigs a lot. I cut my hair and then at the back of my hair I even made a design, a heart shaped design and put a baby, a teddy in the middle. And yes. that was more like I'm carrying this low cut because of the I'm baby. The baby. <laughs> and that's, that's it was, funny. Yeah, so it's actually one of those things. If you have the mindset of looking beautiful, yeah. looking clean, mm -hmm. then I don't think you would be like most of those women. Even though I know there are women who experience a lot of yes. you know, internal um, heat and the rest of them, but it doesn't mean you have to look bad. There are there are a lot of summer gowns you can wear that can make you look good. So you don't necessarily need to look like what you're passing That's through. True. You know, there's this statement people make, we don't look like what we're passing through. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. If yeah. a pregnant woman has that mindset, I don't look like what I'm passing through, then somehow she'll get by. Wow. It's a mindset thing. Wow, wow. Thank you for that um, enlightening talk. And sincerely, I would agree with you. It it's really should be a mindset thing. And then you should not really um, focus on um what people say about it it should be your thing what exactly. you personally want and how you want others to perceive you while being pregnant exactly to to even th to buttress this point i actually was on bed rest during my pregnancy days oh. i was admitted in the hospital i recall i was one of those women who was able to identify the perfumes that went well with me because i didn't like all smells i was one of those who but, you know, I, I had threatened abortion, so oh. I was on bed rest. I wasn't a, a, allowed to use the bathrooms. They bathed me on my bed. Wow. But I recall, I would always make the nurses change my, sh my beddings. Hmm. And then I would powder my face, put my lips... While blood, still on yes, the hospital, wow. And then put on lipsticks and everything. And then they would say, is this woman pregnant? <laughs> and then 
I had my novels with me. I always tried to look very good. And then, you know, most times, most doctors wanted to be around my bedside because I was always maintaining my steeds. So that's the reason why I say it's a, it's a mindset, mindset thing. thing. And, you know, because I had other women in the world with me, I influenced them. Wow. And I, I noticed they were acting just like that's myself. Indeed. So you can see that it's not because they cannot look good. It's just because they don't want to. Hmm. Wow, wow, that's 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 really amazing. I think maybe I'm going to copy your style when I went, when I eventually get married and I'm pregnant and I'm telling my doctors, okay, okay, wow, that that's nice. All right, so now um going forward, why is maintaining hygiene for pregnant and nursing mothers why is it very important? What do they stand to lose if their hygienes are not there? Okay, I'm going to come from two aspects. Okay. One of the aspects is social aspect, and the other aspect is in terms of your psychological and your physiological aspect. All right. In the physiological aspect, now I'll say it: if you maintain good hygiene, you'd um, stand the chance of not being sick. You don't come down with different kinds of diseases, both oral diseases and um, diseases of the um, urinary tract, diseases like malaria, Zika virus. You know, there was a time everybody was talking about Zika virus. Yeah. And you know it's caused by mosquitoes. Yeah. Just imagine not maintaining hygiene in your home and then you have litters everywhere. Not only would you have things like malaria, there are mosquitoes that cause Zika virus. So you can imagine someone having Zika virus when the person is pregnant. And then, you know, it affects the child yeah, a that's, lot. That's the, true. Yes, there's something we call, I mean, let me not use the medical term, but the baby comes with very small heads when they are born and then it could also lead to you know all those um things that make the baby look like they are in vessels and the rest of them that's just by the way this is just a few of the diseases that could be caused and then when it comes to social aspect now from the social side now you stand the chance of losing your husband to someone who looks a lot better and then for some others i forgot there's also the psychological part when you try when you give in to your experiences within somehow you look into the mirror and you feel like you've lost yourself mm. and then it leads a lot of women into depression, depression. and that's where you start having that uh, yeah. yes postpartum depression, depression and the rest of them rising as a matter of fact like i said it comes with your mindset if you're able to keep telling yourself god i must look good i must be beautiful irrespective of the fact that i'm getting fat here my nose is um, enlarged and the rest of them think of yourself just being a clown making people happy you know in a circus or something but this time around you're a clown with only the nose and then your body is looking good and pretty even though you don't have clothes that can make you look very fine why not go for the boo-boos and go for the ones that look pretty beautiful yeah, yeah. yeah. so those are things you can do so like i said it could be divided i said initially too so we can look at it from three angles the social aspect you can look at it from the um physiological aspect and then from the psychological aspect wow thank you so much for that so wow wow like this is just wow okay so going um further you mentioned something about um oral oral hygiene yeah i i don't know from my research i noticed that it is one of the um most common. common disease and infections when it comes to um, pregnancy. pregnant women and nothing why is that very simple have you ever tried brushing your teeth and then it feels like you're having this gagging reflex reflex like you want, want to, to throw up in pregnancy women naturally want yes, to throw up yeah. because your pregnancy is pushing up your um stomach and all your gastric um system up and then it's making you feel like you want to throw up, up. so when it comes to brushing they quickly just want to pretend they have brushed oh. and then keep because the moment there's this thing that comes to your head the moment i put my toothbrush inside my mouth uh, i will throw up oh, okay. you understand so they try they don't maintain as much hygiene as they should when they're pregnant mm. but like i said a lot has to do with the mindset. mindset if i tell you that you stand the chance of throwing up when you brush your teeth but irrespective of that 
just brush your teeth because you could have what is called pregnancy gum mm -hmm. that's when you hear you i don't know if you've heard of it they call it pregnant uh, pregnant women's gum that's when your your gum becomes swollen and sore and then it starts bleeding mm -hmm. and that's because it has developed what they call plaque or some people call it plaque on the teeth it's all those yellow yeah. things you find some people's own it has different colors but it's usually yellow it develops it because you're not brushing your teeth properly okay. and then you have food debris around your mouth and then you know it stays there and starts building it's like cut sediments on your teeth i don't know if you're one of those who study geography but you've heard of sedimentary rock mm -hmm. that's when it comes things different things come Things together to over time yeah. and then they solidify and it becomes a rock yeah. so that's how that plaque is being formed different things debris coming together and then they form into what is called the plaque in your mouth mm -hmm. so those things cause your mouth your gum to become sore and then it leads to bleeding gum wow okay so now um are there other alternatives they could adopt for those persons that really feel okay brushing their teeth might make them throw up what alternative the alternative is to ensure that you don't eat before you brush try as much as possible to brush when you feel empty okay so that even if you're throwing up it doesn't feel like you're throwing up food. once you just end. you understand so you brush no matter how bad it is try as much as possible to brush, to brush your mouth properly because uh, the bleeding gum like i said is usually is called gingivitis like I, i'm sure you must have heard mm. that name before so you try as much as possible not to brush when your tummy is empty, empty. and then like i said work on your mindset to believe that even if i have to throw up there's something more important that I must take care of. If I don't brush my teeth, that means I would be um, having this sort of problem. So it goes a long way to help the pregnant woman. And then you could also make sure you rinse your mouth with warm water and little salt. salt. At least it helps to clean angles where you cannot enter. Okay. Gargle your mouth, your throat. It helps to reduce some of those all problems. Right, all yes. right. I, I want to believe that our listeners and viewers out there are getting insight from this. So now, um, I, the question I'm coming to is, um, what are those hygiene practices um, that pregnant and nursing mothers should um, embrace? And I think we've spoken on um, oral uh, hygiene already. You. So what are the other um, tips they really need to embrace in the course of their pregnancies and um, even while they are nursing? to be able to maintain proper hygiene. hygiene first and foremost i would start by saying ensure that there's always clean water around you okay. both for drinking for washing you know for everything mm -hmm. that you have to do around you because water is important when it comes to hygiene so you, you you should have clean water around you there must be a place where you can get water access to water secondly you should wash your clothes regularly as a pregnant woman i do not advise repeating clothes not to talk of your underwear and hey, but some pregnant women will feel i'm not going now so what's the point no changing? no no at that point your body is overworking you're sweating my god why do you want to smell okay please change your clothes all right our doctor is telling you to please, please do. change change your clothes and yeah. then shave shave off the hairs mm -hmm. it accumulates a lot of most especially in your armpits okay. and down there if you're not able to shave it yourself because your tummy might not okay. allow you to see below relationship with your husband and help you no, we don't have to say have a good relationship with your yes. husband your husband is supposed to exactly but then that brings me now to this conversation um for family members you know husbands like we mentioned and even children for those already, that already have children and other relatives how what role can they play when it comes to the mothers maintaining proper hygiene help her clean around clean the surroundings for some you know there are some men with this ideology it's a role for the woman so whether you are pregnant whether you're not especially people in rural areas you just have to do it okay if a man provides me with soap detergent 
it, sh- it goes a long way to show that he wants me to maintain hygiene. Mm. But when he's not even doing anything yeah. like providing, you know, he would say I provided food and this and that. But if my husband comes back with a bag of detergent or something, it's a message on its yes, own. Yes, it's a message on its own. It's like my husband discovers that the broom in the house is short, and then he comes home with a longer broom. It goes a long way to show that yes, he wants hygiene to be maintained in the house. Okay, but still, we are not saying that men are also supposed to be a part of this. Yes, they should supposed don't. to be a part of this. As a matter of fact, mm-hmm. I believe the man is the first point of contact when it comes to a pregnant mm-hmm. woman. Um, I know that we're in a patriar- patriarchal system and it's going to be quite a lot for us to be able to change That's, the mindset yeah. of our men. But there are just few things that they can do. First and foremost is to encourage the women to believe that they are still beautiful. Because mm-hmm. how many men still, still say, say that it's when it's their wives are pregnant exactly. or even not no, say not even even when they are not pregnant, how many men tell their wives that they are pretty? Because they feel we are married. Exactly. I said but that when I was asking you out or when I was exactly. trying to. Most of the women that went into depression, they already felt that their husband saw them as not being what they used Beautiful to be before. Way. So they need to be constantly reminding them. them. Exactly. So if you remind your wife that, oh my God, you're so pretty, you're beautiful, you're this and that, it goes a long way to say, oh my God, I have you to also make this man to, yeah, you understand, keep happy. up with that. No, you're not making the man happy. Like for me, I don't know about other women. I believe that if I want to make my husband happy most times, I want the whole house to be clean. clean. I want the place to smell nice. You understand? Most times, before I even think of the meal, I've already finished with the house. And then I can go to the kitchen and prepare okay. something beautiful. And but something some else. women focus more on the meal. meal than so imagine eating in an environment that, that is, is not even thing. conducive. Exactly. So these are ways that we can help ourselves. But the, the first thing is affirmation from the men. Mm, You're still beautiful. You're carrying our baby. Yeah. I know this baby is going to not be healthy. Not your baby. Exactly. Our baby is going to be healthy. So if a man has that mindset and then he's getting things around that can help. Yeah. This is just for the women and for the men that are kind of in quote patriarchal and don't believe in helping the women in the house. This can go, or a man now brings in someone and says that this is the person who's going to do the cleaning because I noticed you're You're not not able to move, you're not strong enough to do this. Yeah, and then he hires someone to ensure that that. the environment is clean. And once in a while, he he follows you for a natal um visits it goes a long way to help the woman with her personal hygiene wow. because if i have to go out with my husband for crying out loud even what i'm wearing i wouldn't want to go out with my husband looking like this i want to go out with some with him looking more presentable in such a way that oh my god you'll be proud to say this is my, my wife. wife you know there's that there's a yeah. thing that happens yeah. you wouldn't want to repeat your clothes because in your head my husband is coming and then you kind of pursue a smelling of the egosi soup i cooked mm. yesterday mm. and then my god you don't want to wear that clothes again you want something nice so even when he comes in and he sits close to you he's happy and then you know if for men too if you tell them god you're smelling nice today it goes a long way tomorrow she would spray even more yeah perfect. wear finer yeah, clothes yeah, because true. she feels like someone is looking at her it, it's one of the ways to make a woman and men please another aspect is in terms of um, intimacy be intimate with your wife it helps them I know there are some women who would say when I'm pregnant I don't want to be intimate but if you find out that you're, irrespective of the fact that your husband is in, um, you're pregnant your husband is still intimate with you God, it goes a long way to tell the woman I, st- I still think I'm presentable I still think I'm neat I still and then at that point it's easy to tell him my hands are growing and in pregnancy before we give birth is advice that we shave so it goes it, it's easier to tell him can you help you me shave? shave and then now he has this mindset that okay yes you're neat you and, 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 so, and, and, and then another thing is that you know you are doing it for the baby and the baby is for both of you so it shouldn't be one-sided actually exactly so thank you so much dr miriam so now going forward what are the health benefits of um, maternal hygiene the high the, the benefits are something it's, they cannot be overemphasized one is you wouldn't fall sick two the baby would not be infected or affected by anything and three you have a happy home these are just the broad 
um, captions for each of them. There's no malaria, there's no Zika virus, there's no streptococcal infection, there's no protozoan oh, infection. Yeah. The, like protozoan, we can talk of um, things like hepatitis. The, um, the woman doesn't come down with things like hepatitis and it's infectious. Once one person has hepatitis, there's every tendency the child would have and people around her could also come down with hepatitis. And then, you know, urinary tract infections will be off the um, you know, of the book and you know, all those kind of things. The woman is actually healthy. There's something that I heard someone say that's a strong, strong mothers, mothers, healthy children, happy, happy fathers. fathers. Okay. So it gives that a whole, you know, a whole new dimension to everything. The family is whole, the woman is whole, the father is whole, the baby is whole. Okay, thank you so much. Before we wrap up, just um, a quick one. So what are some domains of hygiene that pregnant women and nursing mothers should constantly practice? One, hand washing. Okay. Like you uh, rightly mentioned. The second one is cleanliness of your clothes to your environment. Mm. Three, your food. Because some people don't give um, preference to their food. food. They just eat anything. anything. So you should be mindful of your food because of diarrhea. Yeah, diseases. but this food thing, um, you know, some pregnant women, they can be so the hard when they are, yeah, the craving is always crazy. I think I've had to be with some persons and like it's just, sometimes I ask myself, are you for real? Should I tell you what my craving is? Okay. Do you know the fish these madams carry on their head? Yeah. That is my greatest craving. When you are pregnant. pregnant. Wow. So, so any time of the day, you tell your husband to that's get that. That's what food. I want to eat. Mm. That's my craving. So, but then, you know, while craving for that, we should also be reminded of hygiene and it. the processes that are involved well, in the, producing. The funny thing is that most times when these things come around, you don't want to eat it again. Hmm. There's what I used to do to myself. If I crave something, I try as much as possible not to ask for it. Okay. But when I eventually ask, I already noticed that the time between when I might be getting it and when I'm craving it is long, and then somehow I don't want it again. The length of time to which that thing is even um, brought to you most times could make you forget about wanting to eat it again. Okay. So I noticed that not just for myself, but for a couple of other women. Women, okay. If so that distance is given, just, okay, okay, let me, let me get it. And then you just psychologically make the woman believe you're going to get, to get it, it. And then you take a long time. Before you bring it, she doesn't okay. want it again. Hmm. And then they begin to want, want something, something else. else. Okay, so what about water as well? Um, yes, you should in, ensure to maintain clean water. Um, there are so many ways to purify your water. One of the easiest ways is using aloe. Mm. Aloe can be used to purify your water for drinking. I've heard many people say that aloe doesn't allow them to wash their clothes when they use it. It becomes hard water. You know about hard water? Yeah. Yes. So it becomes hard water and it's difficult for them to wash their clothes with it. But you can as well get water and purify it by using um, this, what do you call Filter. this? This um, clothes for filtering. You pass it through so that the debris can, you know, can be taken away from it. And then it becomes clean water and then you can use your detergent in that water and then use it to wash your clothes. That's one aspect. Then secondly, um, maintain your inner wares. Ensure that mm, your inner that's wares an, actually, are... People that have black inner wares, I can get oh, my inner wares. It can kill the fish in the water. Even people that are not pregnant, I'm sorry to say this to, to ladies out there, generally, like it's one part that I think, I wish they can be having inspection actually, you know. I wish <laughs> sure all women will be banned from using white black brass. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately, some of our clothes need black bras. Exactly. So, but, or maybe they could wear the white bras and then wear something on the top that is black. So we can try to stop this, you know, thing that people do of wearing one black bra for three years before like it's it. being washed. So I think that's one aspect we need that's to look at. Focus on because yes. imagine that you are carrying a baby and the baby has to suck, suck and, and then, then your undies are not... 
properly kept oh, wow that, it's, it's really been an amazing time with you here in the studio like i wish we could continue with the conversation because this is something that we really need to constantly remind our viewers and um nursing and pregnant women to always practice and also you know urge their husbands to be a part of the process yeah. so what are your final words to our viewers my final words is cleanliness is next to godliness so try as much as possible to maintain cleanliness in pregnancy and when you're nursing your child and husbands please Please, as much no, as let's say to you, my egg jaw. Then evil will say what? Big hope. Uh -huh. yeah. And houses will say the Allah. Yeah. So please be involved with your wife during a journey of pregnancy and nursing your child. Mm -hmm. And remember, like I said, cleanliness is next to so godliness. godliness. And please, when you come back from work, remember to, to wash, wash your, your hands, hands before you touch your dear wife and your child. Wow. Thank you so much, Dr. Miriam. It's it's really been an amazing time with you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, guys. This is where we call it a wrap on the show. And I had lots of amazing time to our nursing mothers out there you really need to pay attention to your hygiene it is key it is paramount and to our fathers please be a part of the process just like our guests mentioned so this is where i would give my final bye bye on the show don't forget to like comment and share this podcast when you get it and follow us on all our social media platforms on facebook on instagram on tiktok on linkedin and on twitter until next time when we meet bye